try. It, yeah, it's it's very special and uh, to, to be welcomed like that and like, it's something that we all need to be incredibly proud of. I think our Indigenous culture here in Australia is a really important part of the fabric of what makes um, not only the country but also sporting organisations like ourselves really special and um, you know we need to make sure we make that front and it's really important. Yeah, it's um, literally day one today, so I've been fortunate to come in for Christmas and meet some people, so that's helpful. Um, there's no doubt that there's been some challenges with rugby uh, in the rugby environment over the last 12 months. So it's really bringing those relationships back together and making sure that we're all, you know, working together and facing the same direction, really. I think that's how you move a sport forward. You need the tension because that's really important um, as well. That's what drives good, challenging conversation. Um, but at the end of the day, you all have to be working in the same direction. Yeah, I mean, I think it is that, you know, it's, it was been really tough with the Super Rugby um, having to, to move a team on, so down to the four teams, there's no doubt we need to see a better performance in Super Rugby this year. Um, that, as the way the season builds, that builds the platform for what people expect and how they engage with rugby, as, not only as fans but as sponsors. Um, and then as you move into the Wallaby season, that's what creates the excitement moving into Wallaby season. So, you know, we'd like to see better performances um, out of the Super Rugby teams. Um, you know, it's important that we continue in the community development and making sure that we've got that pathway that's, you know, making rugby attractive to young people and that it's, you know, an option that, that young um, men and women or boys and girls think is important. Um, and if we can continue to do that, there's no doubt the Wallaby brand and the international flavour of that speaks for itself. So, you know, it's important. And, you know, the Wallabies need to perform there's no doubt about that. And the CBA has been resolved, which obviously must be great. I think the, the, the Super W competition still has to be included. How, how much of a priority is that to you, both in terms of getting that off the ground and, get, and getting that aspect of things uh, resolved? It's an it's an important part of the whole mix. There's no doubt that you know the drive and, and participation numbers we've seen in women's rugby. There's a real a desire for young people, young women, to want to be involved in rugby. So the, the community speaking to us about wanting to see themselves have a pathway um, that they could be professional athletes in the longer term. So the Super W competition is the first step into that. Um, and whilst you know early days, certainly for me, it's going to be important uh, and, and, and something that you know needs to be aspirational for our young female athletes. Talking about you know lifting the Super Rugby, how, how do you sort of do that? What's the, the approach? Well, I think it's it's there's so much competition in the market for entertainment dollars these days. We can't just talk about it as a game of football. It needs to be an entertainment experience. So we need to be thinking about, you know, family packages. Um, it needs to be appealing to mum and dad and the kids that they can go and have a good time. Uh, so it's that whole entertainment package of a super rugby game. We need to make sure that we get that right so that we compete in that space. Um, and, and, you know, performance is important, but I think what's equally as important is is consistent performance. Winning's important, but the consistent performance. And when you turn up at the beginning of a game, you have the hope that your team's going to win that game, and that's what we're looking for. I know it's day one, and congratulations, by the way, but uh, have you had any informal discussions with Michael Checker or anything like that? Yeah, I, I, I met Michael before I accepted the role and um, we had sort of an hour together, which was great, and then I've got a couple of hours with him tomorrow. So that'll be a great good chance for us to just sit down and talk about the landscape that is Wallaby Rugby. And, you know, for him it's important um, not just that the Wallabies are successful, but also that, you know, the building blocks underneath are important so we continue to produce quality athletes at that top level. And what about for yourself? What's going to be important? Uh, what, what points do you want to talk to him about? It, it, at this stage, it's about getting to know one another. You know, the relationship between the CEO and the coach is incredibly important, uh, and it's about making sure that we find um, an engagement that works really well, and we, that we can help each other and work closely together. So, at the moment, I'm really in information gathering stage because it is very early days. So, there's going to be—I um, describe it—it's a bit like drinking out of the fire hydrant. It comes at you really quickly, and you only get grab a little bit of it. So, yeah, that's what's going to be important um, to make sure that I've, you know, got those that key pieces of feedback. We need to make sure our pathway is relevant in those communities where perhaps for young Indigenous people, um, they're looking for something um, to aspire to and make sure that they get that grounding at the lowest level. So we need to make sure our 
um, pathway and development programs are, are relevant in those Indigenous communities. I mean, there's no doubt that they are naturally incredibly talented athletes, and you know we see as they perform, you know, on the um, international stage how great they can be. Uh, so for us, it's two things really for me. One is making sure that we identify the right ones that could potentially become Wallabies, but more importantly and equally as importantly that they see rugby as an option to build communities because that's what rugby is really great at. So making sure that we've got connections in the rugby space inside those Indigenous communities. Do you have any learnings from your uh, dealing with from the Maori community that you can apply to the situation in Australia? Yeah, I do, absolutely. And, and, and I think that's where both um, at a cultural level uh, but also um, at a talent and engagement level and the difference is you have to recognise that sometimes there's differences in those cultures and making sure the environments are appropriate to induct those um, those cultural differences is also really important so yeah I do. Yeah, so I have been across some of the details in that situation where uh, at a stage where uh, they have, um, st we've agreed with uh, Carmichael and the Reds that he will stand down and not be involved um, and until we really get the final feedback from the police and also from um, the court uh, date which is late January, we really can't do any more until then so we're in a little bit of a holding and investigation pattern at the moment. There was a list of um, what one person perceived as your major challenges uh, for the near future uh, in the job and one of the, one of the things in the list was um, I hope I get this right, was to do with deal with perceptions or even the reality of the old school tie and the, yeah, the basically the private school went into rugby union in this country. I mean, do you see that as a something you've got to deal with? Is, is that a challenge or is that just something that is, you know, what we have in Australia and uh, it's not maybe a major issue for you? Yeah, I think history is an important, important part of any sport. We've all come from different places and, and different opportunities. So there'll be some real strengths in, in those um, old school ties, if you like, and, and they're really important that I make sure I engage with those people and understand what their vision for rugby is going forward and how they can help with that vision. But equally, we've got um, community rugby happening right across Australia, and it's important that we give those people a voice as well and make sure that they are an important part of building you know, what is the future of Australian rugby. And the more you can grow the women's game, the more those old school ties things get um, yeah, maybe. I mean, I think there's a there's a real wave of support for women's sport across this country at the moment. It's an it's every major sport has has got a women's competition or engaged much more professionally with their female athletes than they had previously, and that's really important. We need to make sure that's maintained and growing. Um, and you know, we're doing that with Super W. And in our women's seven team, obviously, you know, comp, going to com games, you know, ch chance to win a gold medal, already won a gold medal at Rio. I mean, for young athletes, female athletes that are playing rugby already, they see a pathway to be on the international stage. So we're very well advanced in that whole space. Uh, and I think we need to make sure we continue to celebrate that. And, and Super W just gives us something to underpin that as well. What kind of metrics or indicators do you use to regard whether it's a successful year? And I mean, there's this national longing to win the Bledisloe Cup back, which obviously hasn't happened for a long time. But what would you regard as a a successful year on and off the field for Australian rugby. I, it's some stability and some some a moving forward that people can see across all of those different things you've talked about. Performance of the Wallabies, you know, community engagement, uh, making sure that we've got um, some strong commercial programs in place. Those will be the measures across the sport that people would look at and say, you know, what what does success look like in the first twelve months? First unity with the states has always been an issue. And you mentioned it before. Are you planning to go meet with all the states next couple of weeks? Or yeah, certainly a couple of months um, is, is my plan. I've got a, a schedule, working on a schedule at the moment in place to make sure I get round. And, and that for me is not just about seeing um, what the uh, rugby bodies are doing at the national level, but also trying to get out and see what some of the grassroots opportunities are and how those people are seeing uh, their engagement in rugby, what their experiences are, and making sure that I'm learning right across the spectrum. Just coming from, just coming from a rugby league background, we see they, the clubs pick up players, you know, when they're quite young, they come out of school, but it hasn't sort of always been the way with rugby, and that's sort of led to some players moving across the league. Is that something that you, you sort of want to change? Well, I think so. If we are developing the talent, we want to make sure we keep hold of the best of them, and that's in that in that piece when they're playing schoolboy rugby 15s, um, which is you know such an important part of many schools and what success looks like for those schools. We need to make sure we're capturing those athletes as they move into that semi-professional and professional space. Um, yeah, that is an important transition. We have lost too many to rugby league over the time, so that is something that we'll be looking to try and make sure we shore up. Obviously, you've had pretty brave plans for, for rugby in this country. 
Yeah, um, I haven't yet. There's a group that's been appointed led by Brett Robinson um, to make sure that he's in, they're engaging consistently uh, with um, Andrew Forrest and his his group of people. So you know we've had constant and consistent dialogue, and, and a lot of it's been fantastic. It's challenging when you try and break new ground; those things are difficult. So um, you know we're in we're in play with that, and no doubt I'll get more up to speed with that in the coming weeks. Well, that's what, you know, it, it's about investigation at the moment and making sure that we've got a solution that suits all parties, and I think that's the piece that we're working through at the moment. Just quickly back on um, Carmichael Hunter, I guess, being more joking, what is your preferred approach in terms of the kind of zero tolerance policy for the There's a, there's a, worked with RUPA, the Players Association, there is plans in place at the moment, which are very similar to what the other national codes in this country and how they deal with those situations. I think there's... You know, the reality is for young athletes, there's there's a chance to um, to make a mistake and be forgiven for that. Um, but if you keep making mistakes, that makes the conversation much more challenging. So, um, you know, as we work through that process, we'll um, you know we'll we'll look at what the landscape presents to us. Rugby sabbaticals. Um, the rugby public's not very happy about people earning lots of money and deciding not to go on spring tours. Um, what's your opinion on? sustainability of rugby sabbaticals for Wallabies? Yeah, I think if you look at uh, the, uh, what a professional athlete's lifespan looks like and if you take someone that starts maybe in their early 20s and has an international career which potentially is 10 or 12, 15 years long, um, you know, you can argue that a sabbatical is the right thing for a mature athlete that's um, earned their stripes and has... Um, proven to the public and also to Rugby Australia that they're an athlete that we would look at going long term. Um, for me it's not that different to uh, the business world where people have sabbaticals, that's what they do, that's how other um, industries manage the, their athletes or, or their workers for example. Um, so I think it's a communication thing, we need to make sure that we are very open and honest um, about why these athletes have earned the right to be it, but I think it is the reality of modern day rugby if you want to perform consistently on the international stage for 15 years is, um, that's a really tough thing for your body and sometimes mentally to have that uh, downtime of both for your mind and your body is a really good thing and I'm sure that as David comes back this year you'll see that, um, that value. Will you allow your administrative staff to have sabbaticals? Maybe, if they're, if they're people that have worked in the organisation for a long period of time. It, it probably won't be 12 months, but it, it might be. So for me, that's industry practice. And if the right person came with the right proposal, that's certainly something we would look at.